Hello class, we are on section 1.8 Introduction to Algebra. Section A is algebraic expressions. We have a couple definitions here. A variable is a letter that represents a number. A constant is a number that does not contain, it's actually supposed to say does not contain a variable. An algebraic expression is a combination of operations on numbers and variables. Okay, we scroll down here. We want to give a couple examples or a few examples of algebraic expressions. For example, x plus 5, 3x plus 4, x over 4, x squared minus 1, 2y squared plus x, 3y to the third power plus x squared to the second power. These are all examples of algebraic expressions. Now, just to clarify something really quick, the difference between an expression and an equation is that an expression does not have an equal sign. That is why all of these are expressions. There are no equal signs and they're algebraic because they contain the variables and numbers. Now we look down here, evaluating algebraic expressions. It says here, replace the variables in the expression with numbers. Find the value of the result. Remember to follow the order of operations. Now, I've told you before, order of operations are very, very important. So, we're going to apply that to this next page here. Scrolling down to example one. Now, we go through and substitute. We have 4 for y. So, we substitute in 4 wherever y appears. And then we have 7 for x. And we substitute in the 7 for x. As you all see, I put the substitutions in parentheses. Like I've told you on various occasions, you must put these values in parentheses. 6 times 4 is 24. Minus 2 times 7 is 14. 24 minus 14 is 10. So your final answer for problem number 1 is 10. Now we go to problem number two. We have the same situation. We need to substitute in for values of x and y. So the values of x is three. So we substitute in three wherever x appears. Y substitution would be five. So we substitute in five wherever y appears. So now we have another x followed by another y. So now we have substituted. Now we're looking here using the order of operations. First thing we are supposed to look at is the parentheses. There's nothing we can do inside of these parentheses. So now we look for the exponents. We have one exponent here. So we need to do that exponent. Parentheses 5 to the second power will give you a positive 25 plus 3 times 3 minus 4 times 5. Now we are left with multiplication, addition, multiplication, subtraction, and multiplication. So we do the multiplication first from left to right. 3 times 25 is 75 plus 3 times 3 minus 4 times 5. Now we do the next set of multiplication. We bring down our 75 3 times 3 is 9, minus 4 times 5. Next, we do our last set of multiplication. We have 75 plus 9, minus 4 times 5 is 20. Now we, can now, we have to do addition or subtraction, whichever one comes first from left to right. 75 plus 9 is 84 minus 20. Now 84 minus 20 will give you 
64. And 64 is your final answer. Now, we scroll down here to problem number three. Well, problems three and four. Now, looking here at problem three, we have evaluate. This time we're dealing with the letters A and B. So we substitute in six for A. We substitute in eight for B. And everywhere it appears, we put a parenthesis around it. So we substitute in for A here, and we substitute in for B here. Now everywhere there was a substitution, I put it in parentheses. So now, we have, we cannot do anything with this parentheses or this parentheses, but we can do something with this parentheses here. So we go inside of it. We have another parentheses. We cannot do anything with this parentheses or this parentheses here. So we go to the exponent. Parentheses 6 squared is 36. Now we might as well do this exponent as well. Parentheses 8 squared is 64. Now we could bring this 6 out of its parentheses and also this 8 here out of its parentheses. 36 plus 64 is 100. Now we have addition, multiplication, and we, can't, we cannot do anything with this parentheses. So we do our multiplication. We bring down our 6. 8 times 100 is 800. 6 plus 800 is 806. Now we come down to problem number four. We substitute in for M and N. M is four and N is three. And that whole parenthesis is taken to the third power. Now inside this parenthesis, we have subtraction and multiplication. We do the multiplication first. Four times three is 12. Now, 15 minus 12 would give us 3. And we would be left with 3 to the third power. 3 to the third power is 27. Now we go here to example 5, which deals with the formula. This formula here is the Fahrenheit formula. It says that expression 9C over 5 plus 32 is a formula for converting between temperatures given in degrees Celsius to temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit. Now we want to use this expression in order to fill out this chart here. So we will start off first by substituting 20 for C. So we will have 9 times 20 plus 32. And we know that 9 times 20 is divided by 5. 9 times 20 is 180 divided by 5 plus 32. 180 divided by 5 is 36 plus 32. 36 plus 32, 36 plus 32 is 68. So our final answer here is 68. Now, in a normal problem, we would put the degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius, but since we're filling in this chart here, we could just write the number as is. Now we move on to 35. Substitute in 35. So we will have 9 times 35 divided by 5 plus 32. 9 times 5 is 315 divided by 5 plus 32. 315 divided by 5 is 63 plus 32. Now we need to put our equal signs here. 63 plus 32 is 95.
Now, draw a line here to separate the next two examples. We need a little bit more space. So, what we would do next, we would do zero. We would have nine times zero plus 32. And then nine times zero is divided by five. Nine times zero is just zero. And zero divided by five plus 32. Zero divided by five is zero plus 32 is 32. We need to put our equal signs here. So when the Celsius is 0, the Fahrenheit is 32. Last but not least, we will substitute in 100 now. So we have 9 times 100 divided by 5 plus 32. 9 times 100 is 900 divided by 5 plus 32. 900 divided by 5 is 180 plus 32. 180 plus 32 is 212. Now can anyone just think about this what is the significance of 212 degrees Celsius? Okay just to let you know that is when water boils. So any degrees under 212 water would not boil. Okay class we're dealing with section B. Now, section B is algebraic equations. An algebraic equation is a statement that two algebraic expressions are equal. Examples of equations. Let's think of two algebraic expressions. We could have x plus 5 and we could have 6x minus 8. And it becomes an equation when we put an equal sign between them. Now we could think of x and we could think of, well, let's say 2x. 2x is equal to 3x plus 7. Now we can also do this x minus 5 equals 8. And finally, we can do, let's say, x squared plus 3y equals 12. This is still an algebraic equation. Now, in this statement here about the algebraic equation, actually, in most cases, you will deal, since you're getting into the higher level maps, you will deal with two algebraic expressions being equal. But just for the sake of this exercise here, the actual word should just be expressions. It should just be expressions, not necessarily algebraic expressions. Because here, this is an algebraic expression, but 8 by itself is not. So, it's basically that when you have two expressions are equal. Okay, now, equations that contain variables can be solved. A solution to an equation is a number that makes the equation true when it is substituted for the variable. For example, when you solve an equation and you get the answer, for instance, x equals 7, when you go back into that equation, you should be able to substitute in 7 for x, and then that should make the equation true. Now, let's scroll down here, and let's take a look at example 1. It says, is 5 a solution to the equation 6x minus 5 equals 25? So we substitute in 5 for x. 6 times 5 is 30. And 30 minus 5 is 25. So since 25 is equal to 25, your answer is yes.